everyone, welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be looking at extremism theories. Before we get into the video, I just want to start with a definition of authoritarianism. Authoritarianism can be seen as strict obedience to authority at the expense of personal freedom. And we'll be referring to this throughout. So what is extremism theory? Extremism theory sets out that authoritarian cognition and being prone to threat is not only typical for the extreme right-wing side of the political spectrum, but is also for adherence to extreme left-wing ideology, as was found by Isaac in 1954. Isaac in 1954 said that there were two independent dimensions of political ideology, which is the left-to-right dimension and the tender-to-tough-mindedness dimension. Einsnick suggested that both fascists and communists are tough-minded. They are both extremists, authoritarian, anti-democratic, and humanitarian. These two dimensions were based on quantitative research and factor analysis. Problems with this research are how people are interpreting the tender versus tough-minded dimension. Secondly, respondents were sampled from a non-extremist population. And within reanalysis, Rockich and Hanley in 1956 showed that communists scored higher on anti-religiousness items, whereas fascists scored higher on anti-humanitarianism items. Rockich in 1960 then went on to also have two independent dimensions. Firstly, the left to right dimension, which was described as the equality dimension, and the dogmatism dimension, which is referred to as the freedom dimension. For example, both communism and Nazism are dogmatic. And the dogmatism dimension examines open-minded versus closed-mindedness of belief systems. However, there are still problems with these dimensions. Both dimensions are positively correlated. Conservatives tended to score higher on the dogmatism scale, for example. Secondly, there are only positively worded items in the dogmatism scale, which can lead to acquiescent responding which is where someone will often say yes and respond positively to positively worded items. In order for research to be accurate, it also needs to have some negatively worded items to see if an individual is simply agreeing with everything that has been stated or if their beliefs are reflected in both positive and negative items. There was also no empirical evidence for subfactors of dogmatism. To conclude on the different dimensions, tough-mindedness from Isink and dogmatism from Rokic may be distinguishable from liberalism, conservatism or left-to-right measures. Nevertheless, people scoring higher versus lower on measures of right-wing attitudes also show higher levels of tough-mindedness and dogmatism. These conclusions are limited to Western nations and there are a lack of studies investigating true extremists as it can be hard to find and attain participants that are extreme communists. Building upon this, there's been research looking at right-wing authoritarianism. Altamea in 1981-1988 and 1996 developed the right-wing authoritarianism scale or the RWA. This was based on the F scale, which we've described within a previous video, and I'll drop a link down below. So the F scale was improved into an authoritarianism scale. The RWA scale includes reversed keyed items and three instead of nine tendencies. The three tendencies chosen were conventionalism, which is adherence to social conventions endorsed by established in-group authorities, authoritarian submission, which is uncritical submission or obedience to established authorities. And thirdly, authoritarian aggression, which is support for aggressiveness towards norm violators or deviants or outgroups. The tendencies are theoretically assumed to be strongly related, and this gives a better reliability. The theory behind the scale is based on a social cognitive approach instead of a psychodynamic approach. The social cognitive approach suggests that social learning during adolescence occurs, whereby harsh punishment leads to conformity, whereas tolerance leads to autonomy. Here are some example items for the components within the RWA scale. So for conventionalism, women should have to promise to obey their husbands when they get married. For authoritarian submission, Obedience and respect for authority are the most important virtues children should learn. 
and for authoritarian aggression. What our country really needs is a strong, determined leader who will crush evil and take us back to our true path. Studies show that RWA is associated with willingness to give harsher punishments to criminals, approval of restrictions on civil liberties, ethnocentrism, anti-gay or anti-lesbian attitudes, traditional gender roles, support for aggressive military force, and extreme right-wing voting and party preferences, and lastly, opposition to environmental movement. I hope you've enjoyed this. In our next video, we're going to be looking at social dominance orientation before looking more into prejudice. Thank you. Bye.